seen as tomorrow is Halloween and Halloween was not particularly celebrated in the 1870s in Ypsilanti or most parts of the United States. I will give you the earliest recollections of mentions of Halloween in the papers of that area era from the 1800s. The 1880s, I should say. I believe the duration is 1881 to 1888. These are early mentions of Halloween. The cur from the courier. These are, I believe, all in the Ypsilanti commercial. Yes, I think so. Anyway, they quote the courier in the November 12th, 1881 edition of the commercial. People who did not know that Monday night was Halloween were convinced that such was the case when they came to view the streets, sidewalks, and fences on Tuesday morning. If there were two pieces of furniture for yard, street, or building that were not intended to be placed in connection with each other, they were found to be in close proximity on that morning. Gates and lampposts, boulders and sidewalks were found to have formed a sort of partnership with the intended purpose of breaking skulls and of cracking shins. The groups of miscellaneous inanimate objects that had mysteriously gathered on the corners during the night would lead one to conjecture that a second Orpheus had been trying his musical powers on Ann Arbor's real estate. Our forefathers supported that spirits roamed about on this night, but judging from the hideous cries that disturbed peaceful citizens, we are inclined to believe that there was enough flesh abroad to clothe a good many pairs of strong lungs. As it was Halloween, we suppose that it was all right and that law and order must give way to ancient customs. November 3rd mention from 19 or 1883 in the commercial states that Halloween was celebrated with due solemnity solemnity by some of the normal boys and girls and that's the normal college which eastern Michigan is now part of I don't believe there was anything else in this one on the 1885 Halloween, a good many boys and girls have inquired what All, All Hallows Eve or Halloween means. We give a history from the Chicago Current of date October 31st. With the close of this day begins one of the two prime festivals of the English-speaking race and the races from which it sprang. In the Druidical times, there were there. In the Druidical times, there are two merrymakings. I don't know what the hell that means. There were two merrymakings, perhaps. The one was May Day, and the other is called All Hallows' Eve. The latter has many Celtic, Gaelic, Erse, and Manx designations, with which the reader need not be wearied, but they all mean or seem to mean sleep, or the sleep of summer, or the beginning of winter. On this night, the Druids built their great fires, and the heads of families carried from the sacred flame to rekindle the hearth at home for the winter, hence probably the sport of the youngsters. Hearth and altar blend philo philologically. Ancient festivals began with sunset, and this practice dates back over 5,000 years in Jewish history alone and has continued in many churches to the present day. The building of bonfires by the priest and head man is also a performance single to know ancient land, the people of those days believed the spirits, fairies, and witches to be especially active on the semi-annual great days and the inconsiderate pranks of small boys on Hallow Eve may be a natural taint in their blood, <laughs> for undoubtedly men once credited the witches with odd actions and thereupon felt authorized to imitate those actions. Tam O'Shanter rode home on Halloween Added to the witchery of the time has always been the feeling of thankfulness for the harvest, 
The people prepared for the winter have welcomed Snap Apple Night and looked with pleasure on the mirth of Swain and Sweetheart. In his poem, Halloween, Burns has sketched this blissful feature of the celebration, passing from the purely pragmatical features of this natural celebration of the harvest and welcome of winter with its indoor pleasures. We find the Christian church in the 7th century adopting the same hours as the vigil of one of its principal feasts in honor of all the angels and saints. This feast of all saints falls tomorrow on the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost and 22nd after Trinity. The church celebration is said to originate from the dedication by Pope Boniface IV of the Roman pantheon to the Virgin and all the martyrs and is retained by the Protestant Episcopal Church out of the services for the martyrs and mass meetings of the people, doubtless grew the commemoration of all faithful departed, which follows on the next day, Monday. Thus naturally came the beautiful decoration day of the European capitals in the South American, Mexican and Southern cities in America. In Paris, the cemeteries of Pere Lachaise, Montmartre and Montparnasse are crowded. In Vienna and all through Central Europe, not only flowers but lights are placed on the graves. The whole octave is more or less a, of a holiday. Rome particularly giving a week to the observances. Vast numbers of devout Catholics go to the Campo Santo for a week waxing figures in tableau representing various scenes and incidents in the lives of the martyrs and apostles are exhibited in the confraternity cemeteries. Naples gives over the week. In New Orleans tomorrow is the real decoration day of the year, and northern veterans of the Civil War may trace the genesis of their own great day. In the Protestant churches, coincidentally, tomorrow ranks as Reformation Sunday, the first Sunday after October 31st, the Lutherans of Germany and America celebrate as the anniversary day of the nailing of the 95 Theses by Luther on the chapel doors at Wittenberg in 1517. Union services are held in Germany and Eastern America, and sermons on the Reformation are generally preached by the most eloquent of the ministry. Let us move on to November 4th, 1887. I'll say 19 every time, even though it's 1887. Halloween was celebrated in all its ancient glory by delegations of normal lights, and the night was hideous with their yells. We'll skip the Dutch part. The popular, a popular young Anthenium observed Halloween by calling on his best girl. The night was serene, everything lovely, and the young couple lived in an Eden of joy. A stranger knocked at the door and requested to see the young Ath. In response to the request, the visitor went to the door, was seized by the stranger and his pals, and hatless was carried blocks away. I'm not sure what that's about. Halloween, hello, question mark, Ian, even... If ever the spirit of mischief or worse gets entire control of the boys and young men of Ypsilanti, it is on this misnamed Halloween. The hideous tumult which prevailed from dark till midnight last Monday night and the marvels accomplished in the way of moving things that should not be moved could not convince any unprejudiced mind that all saints were in seclusion waiting for the next their own particular day while the other fellow was abroad and had complete possession of something less than 40 dozen Ypsilanti boys, we would give an account of the gates, sidewalks, buggies, cabbages, signs, etc. that were spirited away, where they were taken from and where they were put, but our space is limited and we must sell some of it for advertising in order to support our family. One little point, however, is certainly worthy of notice. The boys were not alone. The marshal and his assistants were abroad in the land, as four of the young men learned to their sorrow. These four young men slept that night in an unaccustomed place, namely the Ypsilanti jail. And so, like many another merry-making that has gone too far, it disgusted those who didn't take part and disgraced those who did. 
1888 Ypsilanti commercial, October 26. Oftentimes, we can't tell one week what will appear in the next week's paper, but we can this time assure you with all confidence that we will give you an account in our next of some miserably mean mischief committed on Halloween. We hope, however, that the city marshal and his assistants will do their best to make this year's Halloween column in the local paper as short as possible. And there it is. November 9th, but I don't think, eh, maybe that is. I thought it was a weekly paper. Anyway, we'll see if I can scare up the October 31st or October, no, November 2nd, maybe it was. That would probably be more likely. The October, November 9th, 1888 Ypsilanti commercial states that Halloween was a high old time in many Michigan towns, but the university students at Ann Arbor seem, at Ann Arbor seem to have been the only nocturnal marauders who landed in the calaboose, which is the jail. We will see if I can dredge up the November 2nd, I believe, paper. Hold on. All right, I found at least at least one or at least two mentions of Halloween in the commercial, Ypsilanti commercial from Friday, November 2nd. Halloween, we promised our readers last week to tell them all about the Halloween. And as you can see, it's in the contracted form. Disturbances in this paper, but we are happy to say everything passed off very quietly. There was little or no noise on the streets, and only one arrest was made, that of a normal student, who was caught taking a gate off its hinges. He spent the night in the lockup, and the next morning was tried before Justice Jocelyn pleaded guilty and fined $10, or go to jail 40 days. He paid what he did not feel, namely, fine. And we'll see the second one. A notice was given Wednesday morning, warning all students to restrain themselves on Halloween. Penalty, $5 or 30 days. You know. Okay, do we? All right, I'll check other pages too. And that was all I could find. So I'll end it here. Goodbye. Goodbye.